good morning and welcome to Sunday School. I want you to think about a time that you got in trouble. Why did you get in trouble? Who did you get in trouble with? And did you have a punishment? Usually when we get into trouble, it's because we did something wrong or unwise. Today we'll learn about a time that Paul was arrested even though he had not broken the law. How do you think Paul felt about that? Well, first, I'm gonna tell you a bunch of laws and I want you to say out loud whether you think that law is real or fake. Are you ready? Okay, here's the first one. It's Ill illegal to drive blindfolded in Alabama. Do you think that law is real or fake? It's real. All right, here's the second one. It's legal to ride a camel in Arizona. What about that one? That one's actually fake. In Hawaii, it's illegal to place a coin in your ear. Do you think that one's real or fake? Believe it or not, that one is real. You can't sell your vehicle on Sunday in Michigan. What do you think? Is that one real? That one's real too. Okay, here's the last one. In Kentucky, it's illegal to chew gum and walk at the same time. Do you think this one's real or fake? This one's fake. So how did you do? Did you get them all right? Sometimes laws may seem odd or outdated, but if you break them, you can get into trouble even if the law seems silly. Paul was arrested, though he hadn't broken any laws. Today, we'll learn more about what Paul did while in custody. Before we watch today's video, let's look at our big picture question. What will happen for all Christians in the future? Do you think you know the answer to that big picture question? Think about what the answer might be and we'll watch today's video. Paul had narrowly escaped death in Jerusalem. The Jews planned to kill Paul, but the Roman soldiers took him to Caesarea where he would be safe. However, Paul was still a prisoner. The Roman leaders wanted to figure out why the Jews hated Paul so much. So Paul met with rulers to try to explain what was going on. First, Paul met with Felix, the governor. Mm. Felix ordered the Roman guard to watch Paul, but to also give him some freedom by letting Paul's friends come and serve him. A few days later, Felix and his wife came for a meeting with Paul. Paul talked about faith in Jesus, he talked about righteousness and self-control. And he explained that one day, God is going to judge the world. Felix was afraid of what Paul said. Hmm? He sent Paul away, but he met with him many times for the next two years. When a new governor came into power, Felix did not release Paul from prison. The new governor was named Festus. He traveled to Jerusalem to meet with the Jewish leaders. The Jewish leaders asked Festus to bring Paul to Jerusalem. They were still planning to attack Paul and kill him, but Festus wanted Paul to stay in Caesarea. He invited some of the Jewish leaders to go with him to see Paul. Paul stood before Festus. I haven't done anything wrong, Paul explained again. I want to see Caesar. Caesar was the emperor of Rome, and as a Roman citizen, Paul had the right to make his case to him. Festus agreed. While Paul was waiting to go to Rome, King Agrippa and Queen Bernice visited Festus and Paul. Paul told the king how he became a believer. He explained that Jesus died to bring salvation to Jews and Gentiles. You are out of your mind, Festus said. Paul said, I am speaking the truth. I wish you and everyone who is listening might believe in Jesus. King Agrippa, Festus, and the others with him got up. They agreed that Paul had done nothing wrong. Mm. The king was ready to free Paul, but Paul had already asked to go to Rome. God had chosen Paul to take the gospel to Gentiles, kings, and the Israelites. Paul met with people again and again to tell the good news about Jesus. He wanted everyone to believe that Jesus is Lord because Jesus has the power to save people from sin. 
Paul was willing to do whatever it took to share the gospel. Paul had been arrested in Jerusalem, but had been moved to Caesarea for safety. Felix, the governor, met with Paul multiple times over two years to speak with him. Being in prison for years may sound rough, but God was working through Paul even while he was captured. Paul had the opportunity to share the gospel with the governor for two whole years. When Festus, the next governor, took over, Paul asked to be heard by Caesar. Remember when Paul was first arrested in Jerusalem, God had told Paul that he wanted Paul to share the gospel in Rome? Now God was giving Paul the opportunity to use his arrest to travel there. But that also meant that Paul had to stay a prisoner even longer. Paul was willing to do the hard things to share the gospel. He didn't care about his own comfort or safety as much as he cared about obeying God to preach the gospel to everyone. Part of Paul's courage came from his understanding of the future God has promised believers. What will happen for all Christians in the future? One day, all Christians will see Jesus in his glory and live with him forever. God can use difficult circumstances in our lives to continue his plan too, like Paul. There will be times in your life when you face scary, sad, or difficult situations. In those moments, you can take comfort knowing that God is at work. God always keeps his promises. God had chosen Paul to take the gospel to the Gentiles, kings, and the Israelites. Paul went, met with people again and again to tell the good news about Jesus. He wanted everyone to believe that Jesus is Lord. Because Jesus has the power to save people from sin, Paul was willing to do whatever it took to share the gospel. All right, now let's listen to Pastor Brian answer some questions from kids. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Dominic from Emporia, Virginia asks, Is it okay to share my faith with an adult? Dominic, it is more than okay. I think it's outstanding if you have the opportunity to share your faith with an adult or if you have done that. That is a great thing. I know it, it takes guts to do that because a lot of times we look at adults and say, man, they have everything together. They know all the answers. Who am I? I'm just a kid. And that is not what you want to be thinking. What you want to recognize is this, that you are of great value. You matter and you have something to say. And the story that you have to share with somebody, even an adult, matters. And you can encourage somebody. And just the way you tell somebody about Jesus and, and the difference that Jesus has made to you matters greatly. We're all unique. We all have a unique story to tell about the one same gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's why we're a church. We all have a part to play. Even now as kids, you have such an important part to play. So it is greatly encouraging to me to hear questions like this one where you recognize and you have a desire, it sounds like, to share your faith with others, even adults. Now again, this can be intimidating for some of you hearing this, and that's okay. Uh, but again, pray for boldness, pray for courage, and whenever we share the faith with anybody, whether it's an adult or another friend of ours, we always wanna do that with boldness, but also with humility and with gentleness. So find that balance that you would use to share it with an adult as you would a kid and get after it. I'm so glad to hear this question. It's such an encouragement to me. So here's a question back for you. Do you have any questions or concerns about sharing the gospel? And if so, what are they? Who in your life do you think that you could share your faith with? Are there any situations or people that it's harder to talk about Jesus? Let's learn a bit more about missionaries. Missionaries are willing to do hard things to share the gospel. The missionary we are going to hear about today had to do some very hard things when he went back to the island of Puerto Rico. But he did so to show the people how Jesus had changed his life. Let's watch this video. On a beautiful island in the Caribbean, in a valley between two very tall mountains, sits the small, colorful, friendly town of Comarillo, Puerto Rico. This is where Jorge Santiago used to be the kind of kid your parents warned you about. When I was young, I wasn't too welcome in this neighborhood. I hurt a lot of people, 
and I got lost in drugs and alcohol. Jorge got into so much trouble, his family sent him to live with relatives in the United States. That's where Jorge learned about Jesus. He decided to live for him. And that is how the people of Comerio got their first glimpse of something very unexpected. I made a few trips to visit my family here, and I start talking to friends, people who I stole from them. Uh, they were surprised. They were surprised, and everybody was asking me, what happened to you? You are not the same. As Jorge talked with all his old friends, he began to realize none of them went to church or knew that Jesus was real. I start seeing the neighborhood and the people of my neighborhood, my people, differently from all those times before. I, I, I saw that if, if they just had an experience with Jesus Christ, their life would be changed, and that's how God start working in my life to, you know, give me the desire to come back to Comerio. And he said, now go and preach from the place that I took you all from. God told Jorge to move back home and start a church in Comerio. For Jorge and his family, it seemed like a great idea, but they had no idea what was going to happen next. How do you think Jorge's life changed after he met Jesus? Was there a big change? What do you think? Let's look up our new key passage. It's Philippians 1.6, one of my very favorite verses. Go get your Bibles. Okay, we start in the table of contents, and Philippians is in the New Testament, so it'll be in this column. We're going to look for it, and it is on page 1,302 in your Bible. So I'm gonna flip over to that page. It says Philippians right there, and we need chapter one. So this big number one right here, and we need verse six. So we're gonna look for the tiny number six below that. And it is right there. And this verse says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul wrote this key passage to the church at Philippi to encourage them in their faith. When God calls us to salvation, he begins a good work in our hearts. God will keep us, and the Holy Spirit will continue to work in our hearts to make us more like Jesus. Would you pray with me? God, help us to be bold with the gospel like Paul. Give us opportunities to share the good news about Jesus with those around us. Help us do whatever it takes to share the gospel. Amen. All right, I will see you next week. Bye.